you should be able to understand the peduncles. Okay? So we have the brain stem, we've cut the cerebellum off, here are the peduncles. Here are some more peduncles. But now things got weird. Okay? I, I look at this and I go, this is so cool. You look at this and say, oh my god, you know, what, what's going to happen here? And I kept saying, oh, most of what comes out of the cerebellum is inhibitory. And you look at this and say, most of what I see here is excitatory. Until you start to take a look at the picture, start to realize what is going on here, what's happening. How do these signals get in? They're all excitatory coming in. And how do they get out? Many levels of inhibition. So there's all sorts of inhibitionals, inhibitional, I guess that's right, signaling going on, where you can inhibit a little bit of a signal, a lot of a signal, or all of the signal. So please, you, uh, you know I'm going to ask you questions on that. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to ask you questions involving this. You have to understand disinhibition. Uh oh, what just happened? Where'd it go? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Just for a <coughs> oh, no exam. Yeah, I have to look at it. Oh, no, you have an exam. That's not a question. <laughs> All right. And then we had something that was slightly less complicated, or more complicated, depending on your point of view. In reality, what are we looking at here? Pathways. These are pathways. These are fiber tracks. Your brain is just pathway over pathway. Your brain makes the LA freeway system look simple. You should say, OK, with the dentate nucleus, where the signal's going. When you name a structure, is it ipsilateral or contralateral? And that's how you should think about it. Every fiber track in the brain is either going to be ipsi or contralateral. Yeah? Are you going to say contralateral to the start point? Or I don't know what I'm going to say. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't put it together yet. Okay. So if I asked you about. That it wasn't detected, then it showed you the picture. Um, if I asked you, getting from the dentate nucleus to the cerebellar cortex, is this pathway ipsilateral or contralateral? What would you tell me? Well, I would say it's contralateral, but then it goes back to the ipsilateral. Okay. So if I said, are the effects of the outputs from the dentate nucleus seen ipsilaterally or contralaterally? How would you answer that? That's contralateral. Ipsilateral. It's ipsilateral. <laughs> <laughs> All right? It's contra, contra, ergo, ipsi. <laughs> All right. So let's see. So the question was, the effects of this dentate nucleus on the cerebellar cortex. Well, are the effects contralateral or ipsilateral? And in this case, it's ipsy. Now, if I say, and this is where you have to carefully read a question. The effects of the dentate nucleus on the cerebral cortex, are they ipsilateral or contralateral? Okay. The effects of the outputs from the dentate nucleus to the inferior olive, are they ipsilateral or contralateral? 
the effects of the outputs from the dentate nucleus to the red nucleus. The effects of the red nucleus on the cerebellar cortex with respect to the dentate nuclear pathway. We have to say that. So that's the approach to take. Walk through it, looking at it from point to point. Oh, come on. I am not happy with you. I think it's just a cord. No, it's not. There, there's, there's. When you move the cord, it came back. Mm -hmm. that, the back one. Yeah. No, it came back. It disappeared. <laughs> so. That was cute. Um, All right. Oh. Uh, oh, I skipped one. So then the interposed nucleus. You should be able to trace these out. All right? Once again, I could see giving you a blank brain, this section of brain, and say, oh, trace this out for me. Show me where the fiber tracks go from the interposed nucleus? Completely fair question. This one, on the other hand, would be a little exciting. You go, yeah. But you should be able to do this. OK? I'm oh, getting close to the end. We looked at the homunculus. It's so cute. Um, yeah. You know, and we looked at these areas in here with relationship to head, arm, leg, etc. Oh boy, could you see me asking you a question associating blood flow and saying, oh, we knock out the PCA. What do we lose? Oh, I wouldn't use that figure. That figure We knock out the PICA, the PICA in here. What are you likely to lose? And you can go to your handy dandy shirt. See, right? You know, what's going on? Oh, but it includes all of this in there, right? So maybe feet, back, and back of head. Oh, darn, that would be pretty funky. So once again, you know, you've got all of these, these figures online. You can, you know, print out the ones with blood flow. You know I'm going to ask you about blood flow. Every time we've talked about blood flow, I've asked you a question or two. Why? Because that's one of the most common problems you're all going to be dealing with. You've got to understand blood flow. Cool. That and anything else I talked about is what's on your exam. Yeah. Notes three in the video that said for this exam, right? It is. Okay. Yes. It should have covered it, I think. I see. Yeah. It, it just, no, don't. Notes four is for the last exam here. And, you know, these might be slightly off because. He reorganized a couple of lectures in there, so just make sure you read through the notes. I'm so excited. I get to teach Nero all by myself next time. Oh, yeah. 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 The world always changes. So yeah, so I get to beat on a whole bunch of students. What else can I tell you? What else can I do? Two of you stick around for a few minutes. The ones that did not Yes? Um, just completely unrelated. Uh, lecture exercise two. Has it been read it? Oh, it has been. It's up. It's posted. No, that was three. You posted three. I posted three. Oh, oh posted, two? I never posted. posted. Under, you posted, I think you posted under three. Oh, so no, you're right. I